Hello, every pony. Ian here. We're gonna have a party here tonight. In this video, I disassemble a laptop. Every now and then, curiosity takes over common sense, and I take apart electronics to see if I could either repair them, or improve, or upgrade them somehow. This is one of those days. Now, I'd like to mention that this is not intended to be a tutorial of any sort. Therefore, I, Ian, claim no responsibility to what you do with your own stuff as a result of watching this video. Laptop construction tends to vary by model and manufacturer, and if for some reason you decide to open one up, be sure to consult a user's and especially a maintenance manual. More likely than not, you could typically find an officially published one online if you properly and thoroughly search for one. But whatever you want to do is fine. Also, needless to say but worth noting, I edited this with a time lapse through most of the process. In other words, I sped up the video but tried to keep showing the different components I detached from the computer at normal speed. This is an old Toshiba Satellite Pro 4200. This laptop used to belong to my brother years ago and he apparently forgot about it. Since then, he has more modern computers he and his family use. Not shown here. I had already took out the battery, the RAM, an expansion card left in one of the slots, and the keyboard. I also took out the hard drive, which works and is accessible after putting it inside an enclosure. However, I did not format it yet. Judging from the contents of the hard drive, the computer used a version of Windows NT pre-2000 or XP but not 95 or 98 per se. It has a capacity of only 5.59 gigabytes after formatting, extremely small by today's standards. When I had opened it up, there was no internal modem present. If there was an internal modem, it would presumably be for dial-up connections. Nowadays, laptops would typically have both a wired ethernet port and wireless adapter for broadband internet connections. This was placed in an outdoor storage shed for years before I rummaged it out recently. It wasn't exactly the ideal environment to put any electronic device, let alone a computer, inside of. In addition, the battery was left inside, and even though it did not leak any acid and did further damage, it was fully discharged beyond any further use. That obviously did not help keep this computer in an operable condition. The warranty stickers that covered screws vital to opening this up literally dissolved in moisture from condensation from being in improper storage over the years. To give you an idea of how old this computer is, it contained a floppy drive, a 9-pin serial port, and a 25-pin serial port that printers used to connect to. Instead of a trackpad, there's a series of buttons that somehow control the mouse cursor. Speaking of which, it contains two old Personal System 2 connectors, each for an external mouse and keyboard. These connections are more or less now considered obsolete by the USB standard and or the wireless Bluetooth standard. There is one USB port, but I'm fairly certain it's version 1.1 instead of the high-speed 2.0. The computer is pretty much as old, maybe a little bit newer, than the desktop I use. That still works, by the way, except as a desktop, it is more powerful and especially more expansive and open to upgrades than this Toshiba Satellite Pro. Had this computer still worked, i.e. have its battery still be able to charge, or even turn on and boot while plugged in, I would surely make use of this computer instead of taking it apart and salvaging what could be modernized as opposed to what could possibly just work. I had almost wished it did work for, if anything, to use the 9-pin port for the PlayStation Dex Drive device. I may show that in a future video. As I mentioned, I did have to reference a downloaded field replaceable unit documentation, aka a manual, to open up this particular model laptop. This is the first time I ever opened this laptop, hence the blind run or semi-blind run warning I put in this title. I did have experience doing basic upgrades to the Dell Latitude 120L I use to this day, 
On that laptop, I have replaced the keyboard, maxed out its RAM, changed the optical drive from a DVD-ROM with only CD-RW burning capabilities to one that can burn DVDs, and just recently changed the hard drive to have a larger capacity. The soundboard, which contains a volume knob and the TRS ports, one for line-in slash microphone and one for line-out slash headphones. This is the membrane switch. I actually don't know what this is for, but it is connected to the board that connects to the hard disk drive and battery board. The hard disk drive and battery board contains the parallel ATA slash IDE connector that the hard drive slides into and out of. I had already taken out the hard drive prior to filming. The floppy disk drive. Other than the screws bolting it down, the only thing connecting it to the system board is a flexible cable. We don't even use floppies anymore. USB flash memory supersedes this technology. The CD-ROM drive. This looks like it uses a slightly different connector than what I have encountered previously, and had this computer still worked, I would have had a difficult time trying to find a suitable upgrade to even a DVD-ROM drive, let alone DVD-RW burner. Also, I'm fairly certain this is a CD-ROM drive. Had this been DVD-ROM, this laptop would have had an RCA connector for composite video as an additional video output, for playing back DVDs on television. Note that I said composite and not S-video, again indicating the age of this machine. The cooling module. This is pretty much the fan placed above the processor. The RTC battery.
the system board, aka the motherboard. I left the processor attached to it. I had a difficult time prying it out completely off the bottom cover, even after making sure I took out all the necessary screws bolting it down. I may have broken it in the process, but it was of no loss since the computer no longer worked anyways. I did more extensive upgrades to the Toshiba Cosmio G55 I use for gaming and capturing and more intensive graphics work. There I actually opened it up to its motherboard to replace the NVIDIA card that was put in higher end and thus more expensive Cosmio G50s. Also I put in a SATA harness necessary to add a second hard drive and put in higher capacity and slightly faster drives replacing the stock hard disk drive. With a BIOS upgrade, I was able to double the RAM from the factory maximum of 4GB to 8GB by changing both DIMMs. I hope you enjoyed this video thus far. Please subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash Inuyasha, watch and share my other videos. Add me on facebook.com slash Inuyasha. Stay tuned for part 2 of the semi-blind run of Let's Disassemble a Laptop, where I inevitably have to take out the thin film transistor liquid crystal display panel from the top cover.